You got a good one for you this afternoon. Okay. It's going to be a lot of fun on this sunny Orlando afternoon. In beautiful Orlando, Florida. Can you call Roman Reigns? Well, yeah, that it takes the power. Yeah. He's a fan. I haven't responded. I've texted him to see if he's in England. Um, I, I, I may have responded. Oh. I, I just told him you're here until Did you? And then he's like, he said he gets back Sunday. Yeah. We'll be humble about it, but did you text my friend Roman Reigns for me? <laughs> <laughs> my, my very good personal friend. I oh, the mic's on? Jeez. Oh. <laughs> how, how did that get out? Hate it when that happens. <laughs> did he? That's not enough that's <laughs> yeah. Then uh, salsa will get you. Oh boy. Hey hey. Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the panel. Boy, um, before we go. get this panel started, I have a couple of things I'd like to say. The first of those things is my name is Steve, and it's been an honor to spend this weekend with you as we get ready for our final panel of the day in this big room here. Um, and before I uh, before we get started with that, there's someone I would like you all to become well aware of, get acquainted with, and most importantly, say thank you to, and that is this gentleman right here, Brandon Benfield, ladies and gentlemen. Happy. And allow me to explain why he's so important. I am so lucky that I get to come up here once or twice a year, depending on what city we're in, and spend some time with these amazing performers from around the world, and uh, talk to you guys as an audience, because I'm the, I'm the biggest fan of all of this. It's Maybe not, I'm not going to compare notes, but we're all the super fans of this. And the only reason that it happens is because Brandon has reached out. He has brought all of the overseas guests that are here this weekend are because of this man right here. Please, one more time. And while I work, while I work on this show for about 24 hours of the whole thing, and that's up here in front of everybody, he works on it. 24 months a year somehow. You really do, and I know, I, and because this, always, he's eat, sleeping, and breathing this, he's making connections, he's bringing people who they want to see. So thank you so much, Brad. Thank you, Steve. Uh, before I introduce our guest, uh, yes, I did make the connections, and yes, we, uh, we did talk, obviously, on behalf of the staff. Um, you know, I helped reach out to these guys. Um, but really, I got to give it up to our sponsors as well. Um, they were great, um, you know, especially uh, you know just, just getting these guys here, helping you know helping get the international guests here. Basically, the way the thing that I came up with was, I know you guys want to meet um, more guests. I mean, when the show moved to New Zealand, um, it got harder to um, you know it gets harder for the convention circuits to get the rarer guests, and so I. I came up with a way to do it, and we were able to get seven of these guys here. So it's it's been an awesome uh, journey, um, you know, just kind of bringing that to you guys and watching it grow and and seeing where it went. And it kind of went on its own uh, with uh, well, first of all, um, you know, one of the connections that I had made very early in this process was with John. Um, John, uh, you know, he, uh, had a habit of having people message him and they haven't really been, um, how do I say, um, proper? I mean, Simple? civil, yeah, sure. Civil. Um, <laughs> but I just, I kind of came to John with open arms and like, hey man, you know, this is, this is kind of a great type of family show, Ranger Stop, would love to have you. Um, and uh, he, you know, accepted humbly and um, here we are today. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Tui. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. And, and uh, fate has it that we are all here today enjoying each other's company. Um, yeah, Brandon reached out. I, I'm a person that operates on my mood and my feeling, and I try to be truthful to that. And uh, yeah, I'm an old type of guy. A handshake in your word means a lot to me. And I've let a lot of people down. I'm not perfect. So I try to keep trying to keep my word. And um, yeah, I said to him, make, make it happen and I'll, I'll be over there. I was, <clears throat> I still haven't signed the contract. It was, I had a movie that I was, I thought I was gonna be part of um, this year and uh, that fell through. And, and I don't care, I'm exactly where I, I should be right now in this moment. So thank you for coming in. Yeah. <laughs> 
John, um, not only a consummate professional, but I think you speak from the heart at all times, uh, at least since I've met you, and I've been really lucky to get to know you these past few days. And uh, of, uh, there's a lot of people and a lot of fandoms, and, and you uh, told me the other day in front of the audience, so you told all of us, really, that... That um, I wanted to kill the parents? That was... <laughs> that was you guys that heard that? Yeah. Yeah. I hate it when that happens. No, <laughs> sometimes it happens. So. We, um, I was talking to your close personal friend, Roman Reigns, and he said that now. But no, um, really, really, no uh, the, the amazing thing is you are true to that. And, and you said that you were at movie premieres uh, for like Hoffman Shaw. Somebody mm. calls out, oh, Solaris Knight, you're there. Yeah. You, you remember the fans, and, you, and, uh, and I think that uh, this fandom is lucky to have you uh, stepping into the fold of it, if you will. Yeah, I know you have your bonds, and I'm glad you're doing this one. Uh, it's been an awesome experience, guys. And uh, I have to apologize twice for showing up late. That's, uh, Florida has a very strong seltzer community here. Yeah. Mm. So I gave it a crack two nights in a row. Yeah. Yeah. It'll get you. <laughs> it's a great place to It'll get you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nonetheless, my wife always says, just be in the moment. We miss you. You know, I'm a family man. Uh, I hope I've led, led with that. You know, um, I've seen this industry um, from all three sides, you know, as, a, as an actor, uh, as a student, and um, just as a person who's out there have, getting these great opportunities to do uh, movies. I love what I do, guys, you know? And uh, Power Rangers gave me my first break, my first break in, in, in my career. Um, when I left drama school, <clears throat> I, was, uh, I ended up being a painter for a year, and I, I did a lot of auditions, and the doors just keep closing. And, you know, for us that were at the memorial for poor, and uh, mental health came up, and I'm just, you know, it's, it's amazing how people don't know how much they can affect you. And as an actor, you know, you're told you're not good enough, you're not good looking enough, you're, you're too big, you know, you're too old. Uh, and it can wear you down. But I truly believe that if you're passionate about something, most people I know that are working at the moment aren't doing what they've dreamed of doing, you know? They, they're just turning the wheels, paying bills. Um, for me, I don't see myself doing anything else. Um, and my first break, like I said, Disney gave me the, the role of a lifetime, and that was playing Doggy Anubis Kruger. Um, and all my theatre training went into this character. And people, come, and thank you for coming up to the booth and being patient, standing in the lines. I based him on General Patton. He was a general for me. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with the story, but. I kept him regal and I kept him very militant until he found out that his wife, Asinia, was alive. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to make him more human. And some of the hardest things about being in that dog suit was trying to give my character a soul and I'm not seen. I mean, I always felt like, uh, yeah, I, I, I felt like as an actor that I should be seen, you know, so that we could convey the emotions across. But I was, uh, it, it came down to the, the orchestra, and that when I say the orchestra, like how everybody plays their part. So it was the mechanics working the eyes. I saw the head, and I was like, man, how is this going to work? Because Power Rangers, the mentors, are always in human form, in some way, form, or fashion, with maybe some prosthetics. But I was behind this veil, and I had to make him walk and look a certain way. And I keep telling people, like, uh, yeah, it wasn't easy. But I, I, never, I never complained. I was, uh, I was grateful, man. To, to try to bring this character to life. And uh, yeah, everyone keeps bringing up it catching on fire. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. The smoke coming out of the eyes. Or something. Oh, man, I was sitting there. So it takes 20 minutes to get into the costume, and I'm sitting there, and then I hear this, like a spark, and I'm like. <laughs> you can't see it at all. Don't know what's happening. Like, you can't touch it, man. I, I'm wearing these, like. You uh, literally couldn't get couldn't. your arms to touch it, yeah. It was a 15 kilo head, what was that, 30 pounds in your culture? Um, 30 pounds, uh, I could only see through the, the, the mouth. And so, uh, you know, and the, the guys cracked me out because they're like doing the facials while they're controlling the mouth and the eyes. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And I do, the, I actually read the lines in the costume and I had to yell them so the actors could respond to it. And then we go to ADR. <coughs> and, so, and then we go to ADR and, uh, do, do the recording, audio recording then, but I'm in that moment, so it, I, I was pretty much responsible for everything. Anyway, the fire. So I was sitting there, and the electrical wiring uh, malfunctions at the back, and I'm sitting there like, 
and I, I just felt like the hot patch. Like someone just put a little hot iron on my shoulder, and I'm sitting there like, <laughs> that's all in my mind. Because being in that costume, I'd be sitting there for hours uh, with no ventilation, just sweating, man. Like it's, it was hot, middle of summer in New Zealand. So when the, when the, the electrical wiring went off, the smoke started to creep up and fill the, the helmet, and you can't do nothing. Like, you can't do, it's like if you're a motorcycle, you got a motorcycle helmet and a bee is in the visor. You know how hot? What are you going to do? <laughs> Just looking at it. So the smoke comes up, and I'm like, oh man. And I'm sitting here going, man, is it burning? And then everyone's looking at me and said, Doggy Crew, he looked like he just had a, a cigarette. And it, <laughs> his face is just like that. And the smoke, the smoke goes out and everyone starts panicking. And I'm just feeling this heat patch back there. You go, oh, damn. And they're, all, and they're running. They're panicking outside, looking through the visor. Mate, it's all right. Calm down. I'm like, dude, why are you running around? I, I'm going to be the building and I'm, you're standing there. Bro, the conversation I had with myself was like, no, no, you need a man up here. Just... Be calm, and I, I want, you know, it's like, <laughs> so I stood up, and I wanted to run, but where am I going? Because the fire's on. <laughs> you are. And it was just like, everyone was just going around, and then they managed to get the head halfway off and just cram the, um, the fire extinguisher in there, and they just, shh, yeah, but it was a... So there goes your oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 uh, man, it was funny. Uh, because uh, for it's, me, it's funny now. It's funny now. <laughs> but I did, in the moment, no. I wanted them to be comfortable that I would still deliver and finish the show. You know, I've been I've worked with some real divas in my life. Yeah. I've been around some big personalities, some very wealthy people, and with that comes a lot of arrogance yeah. in their wealth. A lot of the, uh, the I could feel how, how you know wealth can create arrogance. If you yeah, and. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want them to panic and then look at the contract and say, hey, we have to pay him because I said, dude, just put it out and let's finish this. I'm fine. I've got a little rash in the back, but she's all right. And that, that stuck with them. So when this opportunity came around and I was overweight at the time, you know, I started uh, getting comfortable, made a lot of money, started eating out more, mm -hmm. as you do. Uh, they said, uh, we want you to play this role, but how could you play them differently? And I based this character on... Um, uh, Russell Crowe's performance as Maximus in Gladiator, yeah. and that's yeah. so. As an actor, I like to look at a base, and uh, I don't try and imitate the performance, but I look for an inspiration in my character. And um, yeah, yeah, Solaris Knight. That's yeah, I love playing him too. But yeah, that was the the whole wire incident. That was one thing I was going to ask about that. Uh, getting Solaris Knight afterwards, was there? Was it just? John, you were so good last time, we want to give this to you? Or was it another audition? Or was it another full experience of you saying, I need another gig? Well, I auditioned for it, like everybody else. And um, I just wanted to say, for me, I, I felt incomplete as an actor. Like, I played uh, Sergeant Silverback, um, oh, I as I do. Yeah. My name is Sergeant Silverback. <laughs> I am the hardest, meanest, most fearsome teacher you ever had. Am I clear? Um, yeah, but so I like to base it on, on yeah, so this was, uh, yeah, I based it on Russell Crowe's performance. And I, I said to them, you know, let's have a Kiwi accent in there. And um, yeah, it worked out, Trump's. Any questions? You can direct the traffic. Yeah. 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 So you Sorry, talked, a, that's you talked okay. a bit about finding your uh, performance and basing uh, Kruger off of Patton. The voice is what I'm interested in because the voice is stern but also warm. Yeah. Fatherly but also with authority. How did you find that voice? Man, I, I, people always ask me what's the formula for success in this industry. And I go, it's not a formula. There's no, I can't give you a formula. But preparation, being prepared, and like I, tell, I tell people, and this thing sounds really heavy, but like, love yourself, accept yourself, own yourself. You know what I mean? Like, don't seek validation or anything else. I was a father. I just had my, 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 my oldest son. I was married. So, uh, I don't know, my instincts to protect and provide as a father, Doggy Kruger had that with his cadets. <coughs> Firm, hard love. You know, and like I said, as soon as he, I felt Doggy Kruger, Kruger's character was, you can't just make him militant, but not give him a soul. And that, he was still, 
it's important because when you're caring for others, there has to be a quality of wisdom that, and leadership. And I just, I used myself, I'm the oldest of nine siblings, uh, uh, five sisters and three other brothers mm. um, that came into play. And, you know, I grew up in a, a rugby background in New Zealand and I also loved acting. And the two I had, like, you know, the jocks were in, mocking me while I was doing Shakespeare in the fucking school hall. You know, sorry, kids. Uh, sorry, kids. Sorry, love. <laughs> Uncles. Uh, um, yeah, so I, I truly believe that every actor, when they do a performance, invests some of themselves in the performance. You know, there's some, I, you carry qualities that, and then for me, I just highlighted them. So Kruger, for me, I cared for these five, you know. I, I loved them, hard love. When he found out his wife was alive, uh, I felt that the character arc changed because then he didn't have to carry that guilt that he let his wife be killed and she was alive. So I tried to make him more human near the end, more relatable. So if you look at the series, he, Doggy Kruger would actually crack, crack a few jokes, you know? He had humor, he was more lightened. I'll share a story. We had a shot, so after, we had a shot where they were filming Doggy Kruger and he would talk about the origins of his planet and how they all got wiped out. And how he felt he failed to protect the woman he loved, you know? Like in Braveheart, he couldn't protect her no matter what he did. But the vengeance after that was harsh. The man was hardened by that experience. Um, when they flipped it around, I came out of the dog's head and I told the story again. Because when I was in the dog's head, I felt I gave a performance for me that was worthy. It was one of my best performances. I was crying in that moment, and I'm in the dog's head, and no one will ever see. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like doing theater. You, 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 you do a great performance, the audience applauds, but it was never recorded. It's gone forever. And one of my best performances was in that dog's head, telling these cadets how I love them, and I will never let them down, but they need to just trust me and my process, and I will protect them, and they're going to be great power rangers. I was crying when I talked about my wife in a dog's head. It was emotional. Um, that was probably one of my best performances. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I emptied the tank, man. I emptied the cup. I pour my soul into every character I play because I want it to be real. I leave a bit of myself in. We borderline schizophrenia sometimes, but at the same time, you have to know that it's just fun. Mm -hmm. I love being part of this fantasy world. Once a ranger. Oh, always a ranger. <laughs> there he is! Who let him in the building? No, 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 no. no, no. What's your problem no, with me, man? No. <laughs> That's what I do, man. What's your problem with me, man? Uh, That's what I do, man. You got some cojones, man. Sorry, I blacked out there for a second. Blame it on the schizophrenia. Yeah, we got some. Yeah, there we go. Right, you you quarterback this thing. Yeah. Right? I'll let you do your job. Where's your bag? Put your pants on. Here you go. How do you like always go from like a place to the table and then paper off your chest so you can't see? This is my first with uh, this franchise. And I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Um, to me, I see you waiting, and it matters to me. Like I said, I've worked with a lot of divas and some really unappreciative celebrities out there that don't acknowledge their fan base. This is my way of saying, I recognize you, I see you, and I'm grateful to be here. So if I was, if honestly, I, I would, um, in, the, in the costume, I had to, I had to make him, make a, I had to find his walk. So I kept saying people, I was wearing like massive, like, ski boots, you know, and they shaped them as paws. 
And then I had like uh, football uh, shoulder pads on, and then they put this leather jacket on, and then the head was the last thing that we went into. So I had to find how the man walked. I didn't want to, but I wanted him to, I wanted him to be animalistic as well. Because he growls. It's funny, because like you see the guys, one guy controls the eyes, so he's, he's doing that, and I can see them. Sometimes I'll go, I'll go, I'll go and I'll laugh, you know? And then the dude who does the mouth, the, I, I, he's like this. Because they're in it, they're, they're trying to, you know, it's funny. Um, I am Cynthia Doggy Kruger, over and out. I got, and I gave him a radio star. Yeah. And I wasn't, at the time, I wasn't. <laughs> Make love to me like that. <laughs> children, children in the building. Did you give him, I told you I wanted to give him a drink. I'm no, that's not. It's they've already seen your true colors, but yeah. 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 yeah, I'll come back. See you later, Bob. Love you. Look at that guy in the building. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and so I had to, instead of making it mechanical, so it was hard to, it was very stiff, so instead of like turning, because that's how I, I, I it was hard to just, well, hey, like, I've got nothing on me, but my knees were stiff, so it was hard to turn. In the beginning, it was like, I am doggy. I was like, dude, I'm going to be found out, because it was risky then making the lead mentor a, a puppet, you know what I mean? A mechanical puppet. So I, just, I did a Shakespearean swivel. You'll see it a lot, man, with the cape and it. I'll be like, uh, Kruger. And I'll be like, oh. I mastered it, man. You should see it. I swiveled the hair. Kruger, over here. Like, and yeah. I found, I found the robot. Yeah, that's. Does that help you? Because I don't know where I was going. <sighs> Thank you. Hi there, John, and thanks again for coming. Appreciate it. This actually kind of ties into that question, talking about the boys. You had mentioned a little bit about doing ADR and voice work. Yeah, I, I, I was more relaxed in ADR, so I could really Can you just do talk it. a little bit about the process and maybe some of the challenges of taking a character that you perform in live action and then translating that into voice work when you're applying it like over battle footage? Man, it's um, energy. The Power Ranger world is, is, is heightened to the point. Yeah, Solar Cell Morpher! Like, every, dude, it's like I come in and I'm on crack straight away. I've got, to, I've got to, the energy has to be, you can't, and I've come in, I'm tired, I've been up all night, I've helped the missus with our twins, I'm coming tired, and I'm like, oh. Ranger, more! <laughs> I mastered how to just, but you, 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 for me, sometimes I'll do like five burpees just to get, you know, if it's a fight scene and you're constantly doing it, yeah, yeah. So I'll do like some burpees and I'm, so I'm breathing heavily. I do a lot of voice work, so I know what it takes for me to be convincing when you hear it. Otherwise, you can tell if it's in the booth or not, you know? Right. Bad voice, voiceovers. And, you know, for as awesome as the series is, like I can hear when it's not truly connected, you know what I mean? And it's just a voice with the stunties doing their stuff. But I have to honor the stunties and all their hard work, because these Japanese stuntmen were the bomb to work with. They never complain, you know? Like, I was talking with Glenn before, the stuntie breaks his foot, and then Japanese culture, he's apologized. Oh, sorry, and I'm gonna say, damn, you just break your feet to apologize, bro. <laughs> Man, yeah, it was awesome. Um, but yeah, energy in, in the range of world. And it's interesting, there was uh, some part of the storyline, um, I remember them telling me to tone it down, because it's too deep, this is for children, you know? So it's a, it's, you, if you've got a good director and they give you good direction, that collaboration can work, you know? I've worked with some directors, they don't even know what, they, they're just about the picture. And then you've got to fill in the gaps. It's like, I have to know all the answers about Doggy Kruger, and I can't um, show it because I'm in this mask. It's a, it was a, yeah. And I was claustrophobic, did I forget to tell you guys that? <laughs> I was like, man, I'm not putting a head on. And Greg was like, dude, you can't. And I, was like, I thought I was going to get prosthetics. Greg, you just put the head on. And when they put it on, I was just sitting there like, oh, man. I can't do that. And then I saw the check, and I go, oh, you keep it on. It's all right. I'll, <laughs> I'll play the character. <laughs> I'll make those sacrifices. <laughs> nah, yeah. And that's another thing. John Tui as the actor was like, I'm not working. I'm, I'm going to be part of a universal I felt like I was going to be part of something special, so I couldn't complain. I wasn't going to look back and say I never applied myself 100%.
in this industry, man, you're going to be told a lot of doors will close in your face, but you have to have the belief in yourself that just you're enough because you are. Just don't try and be like anyone else. Just be you, man. Okay. Hey, John. Uh, hey, Brian. Just wondering if you're aware of how far the character of Doggy Cougar has gone on in the video game. Yeah, I hope they didn't just kill him in the video game. I, and, and the comic They didn't even ask me to voice that. I wish they had reached out. I would have loved to have voiced that character. It's like, you know, there's only so much. You couldn't watch Lion King without having James Earl Jones do Mufasa's voice. Exactly. For us, the nostalgic, the oldies, to make that connection. Um, I would have loved to voice that game. And not for the money, just for the, he's my character. Yeah. You know what I mean? He just played such a huge role in, in the comic books, too. Yeah. Like, and I appreciate that. Like, I'm, you guys have taught me more about my character than I ever knew. Because. At the time, we go in, we sit down, we have these table reads, and we read the storyline, and we're like, you know, um, okay, so I'm working on this and this. And people say, which episode do you like the most? And I go, it's hard, because we shot out of sync. We never shot anything chronologically. So we'd shoot a scene from episode one, another scene from episode four, and so in my mind, I had to already know the journey, and then apply myself to that journey. I couldn't think far ahead. I had, yeah. It, and then it was good because I always loved to watch the rushes to, for me as the actor, the crew, oh damn, I, I could have done this better, I could have done it. You just, my job is to just tell the story. It's not about me, you know? I'm just the player in this tale, and I have to tell the story from beginning to end, and then bow after that, and then let it go. Like, but I'm, I love this world. And the past three days for me have been intoxicating in terms of being immersed back in this world, man. And then I start to go, um, I'm remembering my first break, because my first break, cha this changed my life, yes, and then in the show in New Zealand, like I, I, was, I was walking around the streets and it felt good not being recognized, but then I come to LA and I'm like, dude, you're a Power Ranger, I'm like, whoa, because you guys, it, it is not about right or wrong, but we're different, like uh, you guys support your celebrities way different, man, like good old America, everything's super size, hardcore, don't go at all, you know, like, and being part of this ranger world, like, changed my life forever. So my career wouldn't have uh, taken off, or I wouldn't have been seen internationally if it wasn't for uh, the Power Rangers. And like I said, and I don't stop me, but my great grandchildren will always remember that their great grandfather was a Power Ranger. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm proud, bro. I'm proud to be part of this thing. Uh, when working on Hobbs and Shaw, did you have like a starstruck? I look way better than Dwayne. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> oh man, he was. He's phenomenal. <laughs> he's phenomenal. He's everything I expected a action star to be. Finish the question before I talk over you again. <laughs> did you have a starstruck moment working with The Rock? Always, but I can't play fanboy when I'm working with, I see, I'm an artist, I'm an actor. But for me to pull a phone out and, forgive my expression, hug nuts, like it, it will lower my status as a person. You know what I'm saying? Like when I hung out with Liam Neeson, in my mind I wanted to pull the phone out and capture that moment so I could share it, but I was like, nah, I'm gonna be here, I'm John Tui, I have the right to be here, I'm having a beer with him, I'm talking to him, I'm chilling out with Liam Neeson. And now I wish I'd take, I've got a few photos with him, but. I, yeah, seeing Rihanna for the first time. <laughs> Everybody wants to know. Yeah. No, I declined all of her advances. Please don't put a bristless me. I know how you are, I'm here with your editing. <laughs> nah, no, she never made any advances. Um, I don't worship celebrities. Worship only goes to one. Whatever your belief is, respect. Uh, they're people. They sweat, they go to the bathroom, they do all of that. I think society and uh, uh, 
status, you know. So I keep telling people, don't chase car likes and comments. You get crazy. You need their validation. I need their validation. No, man. Just, just be in the moment. So when I'm around celebrities, yes, I am starstruck. But I'm more grateful than I am anything else that I'm here. And I'm writing my legacy. I'm living my life. And I don't want to be better than anybody else. I want my work to speak for itself. I love this craft. I love what I do. I went to university to study being an actor so I could be taken seriously. I'm I do Shakespeare. I'm classically trained. For I shall not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and to be baited with a rebel's curse. And though Burnham would do come to dance and hang, thou opposed, being of no woman born. Yet I try the last before my body I throw a warlike shield. Lay on, Macduff! And damned be him who first cries, hold, enough! Macbeth, one of my favorite plays ever. <laughs> And then he gets his head cut off, but he went out like a mouse. <laughs> I don't know if we can top that, but here we go. Yeah. Ready, John? Sing it? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we stepped last night, we uh, both are fellow rugby What happened last night's days last night, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> we, we are both fellow rugby players. And yes. Dad, so um, actually, before I get to that question, personally, uh, with Dagger on, you were probably the, definitely the first that I can remember, at least the first one that comes to my mind, I think of larger individuals playing Power Rangers. <laughs> because, uh, I've been noticing, you know, mm. a lot of Rangers are not built like us. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, just for me personally, seeing a larger person get in the, you know, at least... Our big is beautiful too. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. world's got you hating yourself. No, I don't hate myself. No, 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 but I mean, like, they want us to be thin. They want us to look a certain way, and every time, I want my daughter comes to me and says, Daddy, am, 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 I, am I okay? I start to cry, my baby, you're enough. You're enough. Just don't be obsessive about it. Just love you, man. Yep. Okay. So, <clears throat> what's, uh, what are some of your best rugby stories? Because <laughs> we're both uh, played forward, I remember. I was, I was shooting The Hobbit, and I uh, worked with an actor, I don't want to mention names, and um, the person hurt themselves, because uh, we rehearsed the thing, and rehearsal was important, especially when doing stunts. The person complained, and uh, this is where, you know, Peter Jackson is the, the master director. He pulls me, he's just like, so uh, my sons at the time, they, they, they were, uh, I was coaching their under six year old, and when you watch six-year-olds playing a violent sport like rugby and they're trying to take each other's heads off and stuff, it's like, they're so young and cute, but they're playing real violent. But I told, I told Peter how my, my son, they were playing the grand final, he, uh, he fractured his wrist, he's six years old. And I said to him, I'm gonna pull you off, son. And he's like, no, nah, daddy, I don't wanna let the team down. It was, hit me here. And he, when he made me tell that story, the person who was complaining just shook off that complaint and then we carried on with our, you know? Rugby to me is um, it's gladiatorial, like football. They like, say so you learn a lot about yourself, your fears. It's like Power Rangers. You fight the bully, no matter what you go through in life. You you just have to fight for your life. Like, you gotta fight. Yeah. Rugby talking. <laughs> So you mentioned Rihanna earlier. Do you have any good stories or stories that you can share from that fellowship? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there early to learn how to drive a Navy rib boat, you know, it's because I had these two. I had Taylor Kitch, who was on his rise from Friday Night Lights. Uh, he, you know, he did uh, John Carter. Uh, he was on Savages. Um, I had him on the boat and I had to drive him and Rihanna. We had these scenes out when we spot the alien ship. Where I, so I've got their lives in my hands. So we went through some military training, uh, Navy training, and I had to learn how to drive this rib boat. And um, honestly, man, it was scary because I was saying, yes, no, no, I've got this, I've got this. And when they were teaching it to me, my insecurities would start coming, doubt. You know what I mean? So well, I was there two weeks, so I was practicing, practicing, and then Rihanna comes on set. And this is where we're talking about being starstruck. And even though I said, I don't, uh, 
to show my family, I'm a fan. But like I said, I don't want to show that because it lowers my status. Because it's her first movie. And I've done a few. And I've been on TV, you know? So even though she's the biggest star, but she's in my craft. So she came on set, and it was funny because the, man, just the hype, man. This girl was like 22 at the time, you know? And like she was, she just released a song with Eminem. She was, she was the one. She was that famous. Paparazzi were like staying at their distance where they should be. Long, um, Lens Cameron's taking uh, photos and pictures. And when she came on, we were on this rib boat where we're shooting. And I don't know if you have these moments, but I have a lot of them. So I was uh, standing there in my Navy uniform, and everyone's like, oh, Rihanna's coming on set, Rihanna's coming on set. And I'm sitting there like, who's here, who's here? And she comes on, and she's got like people following her. And there's just this energy when someone, a big superstar, walks into the room, right? And I'm standing by this green, and I'm stuck there, and we're getting ready to go on the rip boat. And she comes in, she's getting mic'd, and she's standing there, and she's looking around. And I'm like, act natural, act natural, act natural. <laughs> Like, you know, I'm doing whatever it takes for me to act natural. So I'm standing there. And she looks over, and she's like, get away. And she starts walking over. And the, as she's walking over, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, hi, you too. And I was like, hey, man, how's it going? And I kissed this. It's a Polynesian thing. I mean, a lot of you I know have invaded your personal space <laughs> uh, lately. But a Polynesian thing is like, when we meet women, is we kiss, we. Like Italian men, Baisan, we kiss, we, we kiss. So I let up, I, I grabbed her and I was like, hey, Rihanna, I'm so, so happy to work with you. And like, you know ducks? When they're floating on water, they're just like that, but underneath their legs are like, <laughs> 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 and I was like, hey, Rihanna, hey, there's no sun there. I was just like, hey, man, get, get ready, kiss. And I step, step back and I was just talking to myself, be natural, just be you, John, you are enough, you are. <laughs> <laughs> the vibe of this woman. And she walks off. And I remember like the crew and everybody pretending to work because everybody's stuck. <laughs> and the dude walks past me and he's like, dude, did you just kiss Rihanna? <laughs> and I was standing, standing like, yeah, bro, did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> and then when you got home, you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Dude, and it was like, they had people running around for them on set, but I was like, would you like uh, water, Rihanna? Is there anything I can get you? And I'm like, dude. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> you're, you're with it. But yeah, I was um, taken. But then after about, we were on this thing for like 12 hours filming. So we are just on this boat, hanging out and talking. And she's just your average girl. Like, she reminds me of my sister, you know? And I've got sisters her age. And I was just doing the math psychologically in my mind to just be like, just talk to her, you know? Don't, don't. It's easy to get flustered. And so when some people, I meet some people here, and I'm so grateful that they're uh, speechless, but I'm like, just breathe, find the words. It's happening, I'm here. <laughs> no, 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 it was like, just relax. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. And I hope you guys felt that energy from me. I don't want you to ever feel like uh, I was here better than you. I think we're all part of an extended family. I just happen to be uh, a ranger. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was more story, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I was more, let me finish, sorry. I was more um, in awe of Liam Neeson. Because he does sound that way. I will fight you. <laughs> he sounds that way. And he's tall as, almost the way. Um, when we were sitting down in the green room, and while everybody was acting on stage, I went and picked up my chair with John Tui on it. Move around us and put it next to Liam. <laughs> put it down next to Liam Neeson. And then John Dak Natural when he came in and he sat down. Like, hey, Liam. <laughs> Mate, now it's like, oh, pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. Uh, hello, uh, hello, my name's Corey, and I'm from Australia. Uh, G'day, mate. How you going? Your, your, your brother, uh, Ferris, was over here for a while, but we had to get him uh, excluded. <laughs> Um, my question is, um, there's this game called Power Rangers um, Arm Battle um, for the Grid. Did you do the voice for Donkey Kruger? Nah, nah, man. I wish I, I wish I did. I didn't even know there was a Power Rangers game. I'm sorry, guys. Oh. I didn't even know there was a Power Rangers game out there. And I, now, now that I do know, my son plays uh, Red Dead and um, Tour of Call of Duty. Yeah, my other, yeah. my other uh, twins, they play uh, Fortnite, the dancing one. 
they get a whole uh, get a package like for Christmas. They were gonna be like, yeah, my favorite gift. Power Rangers Day. Oh yeah, you're like, <laughs> we just sign up. <laughs> I love you, son. You know <laughs> I'm nothing. I'm I'm just dead to them. There is no. And people go to me, bro, are you famous? I'm like, not in my household. <laughs> <laughs> not in my house, man. I have to drop my kids a block away for them to be comfortable. Dad, can you just drop me I walk the rest of the way to school. I'm like, hey, man, you know I'm a power ranger. Dad, can you just stop the car? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't play the games, but oh, yeah, I mean, there's, like, there there, there's like JD Andrew does with the green and the white ranger, and he does Rackin as well. Wow. So he does those three characters. Man, I'm gonna see if I can try and score me a freebie while I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I'm gonna try and get uh, get into the game. Yeah, it's really fun. No, but I wish I, I did voice it. I don't like it. I, I don't like hearing something and it's done by somebody else. Cause I can hear it. You know, Kermit never sounded the same. Kermit mm, the Frog yeah, yeah. when Jim Henson passed. Star Wars was never the same when they took the puppetry out of it. Yeah. yeah. Really, real talk. Like, when they CGI their world, the mesh of puppetry and uh, you know, the, the 80s uh, CGI it was it was what gave Star Wars its world. It was theater, yeah. space, yeah. fantasy. Yeah, all the good stuff. <coughs> yeah, all the good stuff. Yeah, man. Thank you. <coughs> do you have a kiss? Uh, thanks to Warren and Super Nice Crew. Did you actually do any of the fight scenes as Kruger, or was that just. That was my stuntman, uh, Hirokazu, uh, Japanese stuntman. And um, yeah, like I said, just <laughs> all the action stuff. And I always wanted to do my own stunts. So when it came to playing Daggeron, I talked to producers and giving me a fight scene. Because I want to show that I can do the physical stuff, you know? And being a rugby player too, I love the physical stuff. But they're like, if you get hurt, we have to pay you a million dollars in insurance. And I was like, dude, I'll break your leg for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm that kid who played with imaginary friends. I climbed trees in my time and era. In the 80s, we played outside. And I don't know if any of y'all remember that. But my kids now, like, I try to get them off this and get them out into the world, you know? It's easy to be expressive on social media, but some people lack the basic skill to make conversation and exchange information and show virtues and learn character. Like, I want my son to go out there and not have game when they're trying to talk to people or their first love, you know what I mean? Like, it's important to have dialogue. I've, and I've said this before on a podcast, uh, People can be mean out there, man. <laughs> but I, I, for me, in my mind, I'm like, if you do not take your veil down, then I can't come into your life and take you apart. So what validates your opinion to me? You're just being mean. But we fight the bullies anyway. What's up, brother? Hey, I'm hey, dude. Really Tim. I, I actually have two questions for you. <clears throat> yeah. First off, when you started playing Sergeant Silverback, how did you feel about having that kind of, playing that kind of character? I loved how did that connect it. It was the refreshing for me as an actor. Because I, I, it's not about being seen, but I, I want to show off that I can act. So when they were looking to cast them, I said, let me play him. And then I based Sergeant Silverback on Lee Hermes' performance on Full Metal Jacket. You know, Lee Hermes was that drill instructor, that southern hard drill instructor. Um, and I loved playing. And then I, I had to find, I didn't want to just make him look like a gorilla, so I tried to, this is a species of, of life that, you know, happened to be his planet are all gorillas, so I tried, it was hard because the prosthetics didn't move. It was hard, you know, so this part that was out there was, like, you Planet of the Apes, uh, Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. Have you guys seen that? Well, you know, the prosthetics were similar to that, but you couldn't see, them. so I had to, really highlight how my mouth moves so the prosthetics are moved. It was, yeah. Whatever it took for me to make him work, you know, to make the character come to life, yeah. I'm, I'm about that life, man. Yeah, and mm. I told you this the first time we met, but how do you feel now about Commander Kruger now being the Supreme Commander of SPD headquarters after Fowler Burgess retired? Proud, proud. And you know, if I could put the, the helmet back on, I would, because I, in hindsight now, that I've had a, flush career and working with people and I'm, I'm more confident with myself. I would love to die in the suit one more time and, and deliver a performance that's... Yeah, and you did in Soul of the Dragon as well, like your character appears in one panel. Wow, uh, thank you. Well, thank you for that. You guys blew me away, man. Thank you.
you so much. It's a great event. Uh, uh, it's always, always unique to get the different perspectives from the different people from, from different walks of life. And we still have a few minutes here. We don't, we're not wrapping up quite yet. No, but um, I just want to take a moment again to say that uh, of all the people that do come through, it's, it's important for us as a, as a family of, of range of fans and as, as a cast to remember that, you know, we really are all a part of this fantastic thing. And it means a lot to me personally, and I'm sure it means a lot to the audience that you feel that connection with the people. And, and you've, you've time and time again today and over the weekend reiterated that. When I first met uh, John, it was just two days ago, but I feel like I've known him for years. And uh, for that, I say thank you. Yeah, I, I don't try to uh, impress people. That's why I think we can go crazy, you know? But I try to lead with love. Good advice, I reckon. That's always good advice. And you know, those surround good people around. Surround yourself with good people. Just have the right people around you. My wife is uh, a rock in my life, you know? I have annoyed her for 18 years. <laughs> And she, she gave me a message yesterday. She says, it's too quiet. She said, I actually do miss the snoring. <laughs> marry, marry your best friend. Don't chase that couple model. Marry your friend. Because when the looks fade, the character's forever. Yes? Um, you've mentioned how you got your character and everything for Doggy. What was your process going into Mystic Force for the Solaris Night? It had to be different. Yeah. And then um, I came into the season halfway through, so uh, the Rangers had already they had already bonded. So I was coming into a, a family that I don't know what my relationship was with them. And truthfully, when you look at all the Rangers every season, there is a trait. Uh, you know what I mean? Like Red Rain, like. If I don't see the same trait that I saw in Red Ranger 10 years ago in this Ranger, I'm not going to be connected to it. And Red Ranger in blue usually go through that struggle of going through hardship and then reinventing themselves and overcoming, you know, trials and tributes. That's what the Ranger, the, some of the stories blow my mind. They're epic. They're epic. You know what I mean? I was really impressed with some of the writing. My process was, uh, like I said, I based it on Russell Crowe. I liked the story and I liked the way he performed him and I made him sound Kiwi. Um, and it was interesting because when I was watching it, it was like, you see this big Polynesian man and he, he sounds totally different than what's expected. Being unpredictable is always attractive to me than being predictable. Yeah. It's the mystery. Like if you're showing me, how do I put it, man? If you're showing me too much, I'd rather, the mystery is more attractive to me than the total reveal, because it keeps me thinking. I want more. I want to peer around. You know, don't show me any leg. Like, yeah. does that make sense? Well, you want to see more. You, you find the truth and make yourself happy. Because <laughs> I think I just lost myself too. <laughs> but the, the core of what I'm trying to say, I like the mystery more than the reveal. Yeah, that's <laughs> Try to find the words about sorry. <clears throat> okay, uh, my question is, uh, do you think that uh, you being the, the first uh, Polynesian uh, a a actor to portray like a, like a, in the Power Rangers world, do you think that that, that may poor no poor was? And I and I, I felt um, when I came into the world, I was like grateful to be there, and then I was like. I, I don't know, and I need you guys to straighten me out on this, because but I don't know Wikipedia. Like, like, uh, well, let me share. I know what you're, what you're saying. I am proud to be a Polynesian and to be working. And it was hard to be boxed in LA, because they were like, I remember being in Louisiana filming and ran into some dudes like, hey man, where are you from? And I'm like, uh, and they go, you Cuban? And I was like, nah, man. And I was wearing rugby shorts. And they're like, what you wearing, boxer shorts? And I was like, nah, these are rugby shorts. And yeah, yeah, he, 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 he looked like he eat too much. I'm a well-fed Cuban. I was like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> I'm well-fed. <laughs> and I love the Cuban people. Um, I'm Tongan in heritage. Uh, and I'm, I'm from, as far as I know, I'm the first for a race of people in terms of being Tongan. 
in terms of Polynesians, uh, Rock, Dwayne Johnson, Cliff Curtis, Timora Morrison, there's a lot of Jason Momoa, there's a few Polynesians out there that are paving the way. Um, and when people say, what's the difference? And I go, man, it's like uh, when you look at La Raza, the, the Latino races, you know? They're all one race, but they've got they're different countries, right? You know, but yeah, it's sort of similar with Polynesians. Um, yeah, man. It's like, yeah, that's it. That's, and I love, I love uh, Dwayne Johnson's half Polynesian, half black. He's half Samoan. I don't know if you guys have seen Alton Shaw, but it was emotional for me to be part of a movie with the man. Because I remember him 20 years ago and going to myself, damn, he's, he's becoming a big deal. Hopefully I get to work with this guy. I never thought I ever would. I never thought I'd be a Power Ranger. I never thought I'd be on the set with the Rihanna or working with Peter Jackson. My, yeah. my journey's been, I hope my, I hope my journey's inspired people to just be fearless in their pursuit and just be uh, be real with themselves and accept themselves and love themselves. Yeah, it's just because like the transportation costs being too dear to like New Zealand or anywhere else. Well, New Zealand is used for filming because it's the one, one country where you can go from snowy top mountains and in 20 minutes be at a sunny beach. So location-wise, it's perfect. So I, when they were shooting uh, all the Power Rangers seasons there, the terrain was perfect for Power Rangers. Like Lord of the Rings was perfect to be shot in New Zealand, you know? Um, it's a great place. When One of the movies I love is um, Last Samurai, and I did, I, they shot it in New Zealand, and I was angry that I was still at drama school when the movie came out. Um, yeah. I don't know if I answered the question, <laughs> but we, we found some truth in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like down the road, there, there's like the, 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 the good, uh, good possibility that there would be more like Polynesian actors. I want to see more Polynesian stories out there. Uh, from what I know, some of that story is like, you know, it's a hunt for the wilder people, right? Lots like, of warriors, like they produce some really hard, uh, hardcore movies, Whale Rider. So to me, some of the best stories are the domestic stories that are told, in the big action, you know, in the big budget movies. Because stories from the human heart for me have more hit for me. Yeah. <clears throat> so, brother? John. Hey, bro. Love you, bro. My man, I love you too. All right, um, perhaps you can help me some of us solve a, uh, a mystery. Might not be a mystery to some of you. Um, but straight from Doggy's mouth, how does Doggy's snout fit into the health? <laughs> Everybody asks that. And you know what? They didn't pay me enough to talk about it. <laughs> it's interesting, but in that world, it works, eh? But I was always like, you know, he just. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a it's a dimensional thing. There you go with interdimensional. Yeah, helmet. yeah. Okay. Space, the bending of space, the tire. Right. That helmet, like yeah, yeah. Thanks, love you guys. Yeah, you too, man. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks. That's great, man. And I really, I really like what you said at pause. I really like what you said at Paul's Memorial. Uh, I heard you, brother. And uh, yeah, when you ever feel in doubt or in, don't, don't be so hard on yourself, you know? I've buried a lot of friends growing up at a young age. So I, I you know, I don't know, if I speak for me. I buried a lot of friends, so I appreciate the life differently, man. I had to live forward, and, you know? And just, yeah, march fearlessly forward. No regrets. That's very nice. I'm saying, um, thank you, John. One more question, actually, we have time for, guys. Uh, yes. Hey, again, John. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought it was another one, actually. We talked about this at your table a little bit, but uh, if you could talk a little bit about working with mm. Henderson, who's been so many different faces in this franchise. Kelsey? Kelsey? Kelsey, yeah. You've worked with him. That's my dude, man. Him. Yeah. Well, he's so talented. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a craftsman. He's a craftsman. Man, would you believe if I told you in New Zealand when I first saw him, he was playing a stripper in this TV series? <laughs> yes. Next, yeah. minute, next minute I'm working with him on SPD, I'm like, my man. S -s -s I love working with giving, humble actors. And Kelsen is one of them. He's my bro. He owns a steakhouse in New Zealand, you know? And I still don't get discounts. <laughs> I have nothing but love for Kelsey. Talented, talented actor. 
some of us carry this so awesome and quirky. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's about that life, that actor's life. Real actors, not just fame mongers, real actors. You know what I'm saying? Remember how surprised you were when I planted yeah. one on you? <laughs> when I absolutely invaded your privacy? <laughs> and you know what? I didn't use the hand sanitizer the whole time I was there. <laughs> With all of you. We are spreading germs everywhere. <laughs> You're not coming to see me anymore. Well, I'm not a multicultural humanities major, so that's a new thing to learn for me. But anyways, since a past Power Ranger had done it, Dan Southworth did it, would you want to play a blind person, like a blind character on a movie or a show? I'll, for me, um, the, I have the, the role has to speak to me, you know? And then when I go in, I commit mm -hmm. completely. Sorry. Um, <laughs> would I play a blind character? If the storyline was good, you know? I'll play. I've made some really brave choices in my career, and a lot of them were, uh, I, was, I, I was scared, I'm always scared when I'm acting, because I'm always going, man, am I going to be good? You know, I don't want to embarrass my children and my parents. So when I hold myself into account that way, I, I put my best foot forward. If the role was substantial, like I wouldn't just go out there and just want to play a blind role, but it would be an honor to learn how you live in a world none of us have the idea. We, the only taste of us in your world is when we're walking and stub our toe in the middle of the night. And I respect you, and I, I thank you. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up one more time for the man, the myth, the love. Thanks, guys, and yes, I'll be at the bar. No, no, <laughs> I will see you by the pool. Oh man, I'll be at the booth, guys. So enjoy the rest of the day. This is the last day.